butterflies masquerading as mosquitoes, shedding light on the genome of one of the world's deadliest parasites. It's a major health problem. The directions for a human being are written in code, three billion letters long. These instructions tell our bodies how to live, how to grow, how to die. Researchers call this code the sequence. Welcome to Secrets of the Sequence. I'm Lucky Severson. Let's talk about malaria, one of the toughest to control of all infectious diseases. It's been the target of research and vaccines for decades, but it still strikes close to 500 million people worldwide each year and kills almost 3 million of them, mostly children. We'd virtually given up on the idea of eradicating malaria until now. Genetics just might help us eliminate one of the world's deadliest killers. Let's see if our cocky computer guy knows anything about it. Lucky, as always, I'm only too happy to educate you about malaria. Malaria is a disease transmitted by mosquitoes and caused by a parasite. There are four different species of the malaria parasite. The most dangerous and widespread is called Plasmodium falciparum. If left untreated, the parasite can lead to kidney failure, seizures, mental confusion, coma, and death. It lives in the blood of infected people and is transmitted to others by blood-sucking female Anopheles mosquitoes. Initial symptoms, fever, shivering, pain in the joints, and headache may occur anywhere from eight days to several months after infection. What would I do without you? Malaria is a curable disease if it's detected early, but that's exactly the problem. In much of the world, malaria isn't diagnosed in its beginning stages, and preventive medicines aren't widely available. We're talking that someone is dying of malaria literally every 15 seconds to 30 seconds, right now. Most of these people are kids. 95% of these are going to be children under five. They can't withstand a malaria infection. It's a very old disease, and, and yet we don't have adequate therapies for it. Treatments that have been used in the past, drugs like chloroquine and quinine, are no longer effective. There's drug resistance worldwide due to misuse of the drugs and to the evolution of the parasite and the mosquito. They are outsmarting us. Now, some researchers are trying to turn the tables. Joe DeRisi and his team at the University of California, San Francisco, are working to determine the roles various genes play in this parasite. The thing that, that really hooked me on to studying malaria, besides the fact that it's a major health problem, is the fact that the genome sequence is right now being completed. That means, just like the human genome, that the sequence of, of bases in the DNA of the entire malaria parasite will be known. To study the parasite's genome, Derisi built his own microarray machine. When malaria has infected a human individual, how do we know which genes are on and which genes are off? Which genes are doing what process? And so that's what we took out to uh, tackle. That's the, the job we wanted to take on. And to do that, we built a, a large number of robots and other mechanical equipment to make DNA chips, DNA microarrays. The machine can print every gene in the malaria parasite on a small glass slide. Every spot of liquid is DNA from a unique gene. And then, when it's dry on the slide like this, we can then apply a biological sample that has been colored with fluorescent molecules. The genes will light up in their respective colors depending on whether that gene was on or off in that biological sample. Knowing which genes are on and which are off helps researchers understand how the parasite functions. We can find the genes, but we don't know what they do. So this is the first step in learning what the genes do and how they respond to their environment. They can learn, for instance, which genes are on in a parasite that is resistant to a particular drug. Are there common genes used to resist various different kinds of drugs? Or are there special genes used to resist each unique drug? Those are the kind of questions we'd like to ask. And we can look for those by seeing what, what spots turn which color. And the next step to do was to analyze those genes further, knock out the gene in the organism, and then ask the question, are they now more sensitive to the drug that we remove that gene? So we want to do some genetic engineering on the parasite as well to be able to understand gene function. 
Samples of these parasites are hard to come by, and malaria can only be grown in human blood. So Derisi had to improvise. I donate my own blood, and we grow the malaria in my own blood in little dishes. It's just food, basically. They need a food source. I just happen to be the food source. Another problem for researchers, mosquitoes, the carrier of malaria, are a very difficult organism to work with. David Schneider has taken a creative approach. In his lab at Stanford University, Schneider has made fruit flies surrogate mosquitoes. With mosquitoes, you have to give them a blood meal every time you want a, a female to lay eggs. So uh, we can keep um, something like 2,000 different strains of, of flies in the lab and it takes us uh, an afternoon to, to take care of them once a month. You, you just couldn't do that with mosquitoes. You can't keep those numbers. Schneider has mutated each of those 2,000 strains of flies by knocking out particular genes, trying to figure out how the malaria parasite lives. What we do is we, we take these different strains and we inject plasmodium into them, and then we ask, does the parasite grow better or worse in, in these different strains of flies? There's still a lot of biology to understand uh, in, in plasmodium, and uh, we're just at the stage where we're, we're trying to figure out what plasmodium needs in order to, to live and grow. Schneider doesn't just want a picture of the parasite's life cycle, he wants to know how to kill it. If we find out either of those two things, it'll give us useful information. So if we find out nutrients that are essential for parasite growth, um, you can use those as drug targets, so you can try to interfere with uh, how the parasite gets that particular nutrient. The search for more effective malaria vaccines and treatments is a slow process, but both of these researchers are in it for the long haul. The real goal is to accelerate development of anti-malarial therapies. If you have someone dying every 15 to 30 seconds, there's really no time to lose. Aha moments are great. Um, they're, they're, they're much rarer. Um, it's, it's more gradual. You get lots of little excitements along the way. It keeps you going. But it's, it's a long-term long process. There's a great feeling to know that you're really working on a problem that could potentially impact millions of people. Joe DeRisi makes his findings available free to anyone who's interested. He's putting it all on the World Wide Web so other researchers, especially those in developing countries without big budgets, can access and learn from it. The Secrets of the Sequence teaching materials were developed at Virginia Commonwealth University with funding from the National Academy of Sciences and the Pfizer Foundation. The original public television series, Secrets of the Sequence, was produced by Ward Television with funding from Pfizer, the Pfizer Foundation, Oracle, and the Council for Biotechnology Information. Special thanks to member institutions of the series advisory board, consisting of Virginia Commonwealth University, Harvard University, University of Wisconsin, University of Michigan, University of California at San Francisco, and the MRC Laboratory of Molecular Biology, Cambridge, England.